Okay. Good uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're here with Master Gardener Debbie Esslinger, and we're going to learn a little bit about pruning roses. Hi, Debbie. Hello. So Debbie's gathered her tools here. What, what you got going getting ready to get started here? Okay. Well, the typical thing you use are bypass pruners. I just got these for Christmas, and they work really good. That's why you cut your finger. <laughs> yes. I, they were so good and sharp, and I was cleaning them, and I sliced my finger, so be careful. And you're just cleaning them with a little alcohol and yes. a cotton ball, right? So I carry these in my garden bags, but you can also put in, uh, you can also use the sanitary wipes like oh, yeah. Clorox or anything with bleach or something or, like that. Or alcohol. Alcohol. That, yeah, that's what this is, alcohol. Okay. And bleach works too, but that's pretty scary, you know, <laughs> hauling it around. Yeah. Anyway, um, and then you always are going to need a long pair of pruners to reach in because roses have lots of thorns so if you and sometimes you need something bigger the cane will be larger so you'll need to have a bigger that's a nice pair yeah it, they work pretty good and then this is a uh, a razor wait let me press the button here a razor tooth saw uh, okay. which works really good a lot of times there'll be a uh, too large of a cane or a dead a dead cane or there'll be something that you want to get rid of these work really well that you can't do easily with the loppers right right and um and then with this they also gave me a little sharpener which is oh, handy nice. and i just keep that in my bag to sharpen all of my tools as i'm working because you want really sharp tools when yes. you're pruning your roses sharp and clean because you can transfer diseases from one rose to another, and roses tend to have a lot of, or, or can, I should say, have uh, a lot of diseases. Of like fungus and Yes. Yeah. You know, funguses. Black. Um, Is black, black spot, spot something that spreads like that too? Oh yeah, definitely. That's why you clean up your leaves if they drop, yes. right? So I also brought my leaf rake. Ah. Um, Cause it's always nice to when I do my rose pruning, I'm standing a little close here. I'm standing too <laughs> close. I know, cutting your head off here. Okay. When I'm doing my rose pruning, typically I clean all around. All of the canes that you cut off, I take off all the leaves to get rid of all the black spot and any other kind of disease that could be overwintering. Um, and clean the old leaves that have fallen and I throw them in the trash. I don't use them in any kind of a compost pile because they're loaded with disease or potentially they could be right. loaded with disease. And so we just throw those away. So, Rose clippings are not good compost material anyway, but you don't want to use them because <laughs> of the disease yeah. factor. Yeah. So um, being the strange weather year that we've had, most of the roses, as we can see, still have their leaves on them. So, mm -hmm. so you were saying something to me earlier about you start by taking all the leaves off yes is that so we'll get often all new what rows? i do is i'll i'll check out the rows mm -hmm. uh, and first i'll take out the dead any dead wood right and then i will um i'll start by bringing the canes down to an outward facing bud and you can you can see because they're starting to swell and often right there's another leaf so i'll just remove all of the leaves and i remove all of the leaves off of all the roses and then all of these these guys right here will be new leaves and new growth that you'll right. get and i like i like waiting until there's this much growth because it's a lot easier to see where the best spot to prune is ah i've pruned a lot earlier and then sometimes you're just guessing and it all comes so out the, okay so the but... new growth is directing you to about right. where you want to prune yeah and then so i can see that this is an outward facing bud uh-huh because so, it's pointing out here towards the yeah moon. and potentially you want to open up the rows and you want the everything to grow out it will eventually grow in right because you'll be getting new leaves and, and new, new canes all, and the time. all the time. So, but this is how we start out in spring. So we is, want that open center so we have the airflow, right? Airflow and sun 
and it's just a good environment for the roses. And in less chance of black spot. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. But you know, when if we get spring rain and then we get sun and we get more rain, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You just remove. <laughs> Often, what happens in this garden is, say, come May or uh, June, they'll will notice there's a lot more black spot on the leaves again. Some yeah. of them brand new baby leaves. I go ahead and I take them off because right. if you get rid of them when you start seeing that, they spread less. But Slows they always re-leaf out. Yeah. So it's frustrating, but it's better for the rose to get rid of the bad, the And the, the black sooner spot. you catch it, hopefully it'll prevent it from spreading to right. the entire plant. Now, there are um, dormant sprays and different kind of sprays you can find at the nursery. But I have tried that a couple of times. This being a garden that is um, food and food, but also we are we are a, on a, a school. Well, the habitat. Yeah, um, it's a, a wildlife habitat. Thank you. And we're on school grounds. Right. So we don't use sprays and things of poison, which I prefer. But I find that the roses come out beautiful and they do a good job anyway. It's probably more about what you feed them and how well you take care right. of them than it is spraying. The dormant spray didn't seem to help the times that I used it, but you know, that's how I do it. And I don't use dormant spray on my roses at home either. And I will hose off aphids. I, I will, Shelby's. if it's really bad, I might make a concoction, but normally I hand- Squish them. Uh, yep, squish them with my fingers. And I also use the hose and maybe I'll have to do it two or three times possibly on some roses and then they're gone. The ladybugs show up, other bugs show up and they eat them all. And so I don't have a lot of problems. This garden does get other bugs during the growing season um, and it's frustrating. Which other kind um, of bugs do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to remember seeing what I've seen on them. Oh, there's the, the what are those hoopla beetles? They'll still they look arrive. like Japanese beetles, but right. we we don't technically have Japanese beetles, I'm told. Right. In California, yeah, the same ones that attack my peonies. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and they love them, and um, they get into flowers, and they just yes. Some of them are microscopic, and you'll just notice damage. It doesn't look good, but, but there's all kinds of bugs. This is a really good demonstration garden for, for that <laughs> all the kind of diseases and bugs that could attack your roses this is a good one but you know they they seem to do well year after year we are should i mention sure moving? you can talk about it right down in this area is we haven't done it yet but we're going to very quickly this is going to be an extension of this rose garden because it's out in more sun which roses love and over on the other side where they are, that's four roses we're moving. Um, that side has a liquid amber, which makes shade, but I think that it also causes- Yeah, we, we were talking about the roots. Right, the roots. I'm pretty sure that the roots go down. Sure, they come out here, I'm sure. Yeah, because everything's a little bit struggling on this side. So Each you think it's more it. that the tree is stealing the nutrients in the water than I the think, shade you know i'm not exactly positive but but i would tend I to think, think a combination anyway yeah so. because there's a lot of shade but it does get many hours of afternoon sun. that's true so you know but each year even the iceberg this beloved rose they used to be they used to be beautiful and now they're struggling so we're going to get them out of there really melt mulch the soil up and baby them and try to get them to come back and be beautiful roses again. So are you going to leave the Joseph's coat yeah, here? Yeah, we better leave that baby. It's uh, I can't see us moving he's, that. <laughs> he's, um, you know, he lost a pretty big cane last year, but you maybe... get some beautiful roses. Oh, though. yeah. And so we'll just leave that. And this, this rose was a uh, light my fire tree rose. The kids were playing in the garden and they busted off the top. So it just came out with the bare root and it has beautiful pink little blooms on it every spring. So basically so, it came from whatever the root stock was? Yes, that's they all, they'll go back to the root stock. So are all roses grafted? No, 
not all of them are. There are own root roses where you take cuttings mm -hmm. off a rose that you want. Right. And you propagate it. And that's called an own root rose. And then there's grafted roses. I have never done this, but there are people, many people who have gotten so good they can take a seed from the flower and, wow. and produce a rose plant from that. That's pretty good. So I haven't even tried but that, I, but I would think that would take an amount of patience because would, I would think it would take a long time before you have a bush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting. A few years back, I ordered from Michigan Bulb, I ordered these little four-inch own root roses. And when I got them out of the box, oh, they looked anemic. <laughs> but I got them in good soil as quick as I could. And they just started growing and then they produce these fantastic roses first year I had. yes no Ketchup way and mustard was the wow. one i i got and it was fantastic and it's been a really great rose so own root roses if you ever see those in the four inch they're usually pretty inexpensive like 13.99 or 15 for that bucks. little tiny thing yes but it's cheaper than a bear root right you know so i don't know i haven't bought a bear root rose but. yeah well they're typically more like eh, 20 30 bucks yeah or up it uh, depends depending on, on the variety and where you're getting them from and you got to pay shipping and all that garbage so so do you have a local source that you purchase spare root ever um well i used to at andy's but andy's is gone Long and then gone. i did a few from uh orchard but orchard's gone so <laughs> and columbia is gone and right uh, so i think we could still probably get roses well i know they have Calvary them at lowe's and then at the nursery up in standard mm -hmm. probably i have never bought one from them mm -hmm. or ordered it or anything i so. have bought a i went with a friend one year to buy a bare root fruit tree there oh it yeah turned out fine but cool well anyway i tend to order, order online, online. Hey, if you can get those little tiny things to bloom the first year, that's impressive. Oh yeah, yeah, they they do actually pretty good. They're ready to go, you know. They wanna, they wanna produce flowers. So, so do you prune differently depending on the variety? variety? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, Let's you, go back you over a little bit. You prune differently. Just on the rose. For a, a tea rose. Tea rose than you would for a floribunda or a grandiflora, you know, you don't print it as So severe. is a floribunda the kind that gets a group of flowers yes. on the yes. end? Okay. And um, also climbing roses, you prune different. I would imagine. And even different climbing roses, you prune different. It's, there's a whole, <laughs> I do a lot of uh, Googling. Yeah. You know. There's a lot of good information out looking there. Up, um, I have a nice rose climbing rose book that nancy picarsic gave me and that is a great book as a resource of how to do certain roses okay. so anyway yeah well, over here we have some different we have a tea rose and we also have floribundas we have a betty boop it's nice to see our newer ones still surviving right there yeah the yeah so the all-important gloves oh yeah these are not the these, I've got small. Oh, gloves, I see you have some with longer. But these are great for protecting your forearms um, because they're long, and when you go in, you're not ripping your skin. Or your shirt. Or... Right. So they're, they're a little worse for wear, but yeah. I need to get a new pair. But anyway, we can go over here and let me grab a bucket. Yep, we want something to put in the stuff that we're not going to compost, which is anything. Yes. Well, we just, we need a bucket to throw away. Maybe we go to look at that rose bush that's in the sun on the corner. What do you think? Yeah, this is the, oh, and this is where it was driven over. Oh, it got ran over. Uh-oh. Well, you know. So is I it dead? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Or is it just okay. in shock? Yeah. Oh, it's still attached. Yes, it and this definitely is not uh, no good. But it's what broke. I right. think what I'll do is I will, I will really bring it down a little bit more. Right. What, what they would? Oh, that one that may be broken, but we can just try it. 
Do you think that it could heal itself maybe? Yeah, possibly. It's worth trying and you can always cut it later. So are you just making a cut? I'm gonna clip this off because that's a dead piece. Yeah, and then I'm I'll it cut looks it down alive there. inside still. Yes, definitely. So you're leaving a that whole you're leaving a good portion of that branch because you want that branch to come back, right? Yes, yes. And so I can see right there where there's a little shoot and here's Oh, I see him down there. I don't know if the camera, I'm sure the camera might pick it up. There's right. a little baby. Right there. Yeah, I see it. And yeah, there it is. Down there. Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It's probably going to be just fine. Yeah, it'll just be go, going outward a little more than it did before. Right. So yeah. we're going to, you're going to take all these dead leaves off. Yes. And yes. Um, let me look here to see where there's some bud growth here and there's some bud growth there so that's a good sign and sometimes what i do i'll just bring it down lower because that's what prunes even all about that, yeah you just even if it's got that growth you can go you're just gonna go lower yeah you can I shape guess you it, have to up get out and, of it and get over it right yeah there's a little bit oh down there yes it, I i'm see. gonna cut see this line right here uh-huh i'll just cut there in the hopes that it will grow out from oh, that line okay and um actually this well let's take, take this one off. off yeah but maybe we'll leave this one just just to see Cut what that little bit just okay. to see what it will do because you can always prune while it's summertime if oh, you need yeah. to Cause, well you have to prune your roses back after they're done flowering anyway right, right. yeah you you're all i kind of do a spring prune and then as i'm going through the summer you're always kind of bringing it back down into shape and mm -hmm. cutting it off to produce more growth. Right. And probably opening it up. See how these are growing into the center? Right. That you'd want to get rid of. In fact, this whole cane right here mm -hmm. is growing crosswise. Oh, okay. It's kind of like when you're pruning a fruit tree. You don't want your crossing branches. You right. don't want your dead or diseased wood. Yeah, because they're going to, with the winds blowing, they're rubbing on each other. Wow, that's crossing gonna... quite a bit. Yeah, I'm in your way, I know. No, no, you're not. I got to grab the uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a pretty thick cane. Yeah. So and... you're going to go down. I should take my hand back. You're going to go down pretty far on that one. Oh, yeah, wow. Because right. oh, uh, it's crossing, you're going to cut the whole thing back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Because anywhere it would come up, it would be... And I'm, I don't like to get rid of canes, but, you know... Yeah, but you're... You have to I think it. the longer you're doing it, the more it doesn't hurt. It's yeah. not as hard. Yeah, it's not... Um, I used to be a lot... Like, oh, no! <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kill it, but they actually prefer to be cleaned up and, and uh, get rid of the dead wood. So I'm going to take that off. These are all very low to the ground. Uh -huh. And in this garden, we have a lot of, of the black spots. And potentially, when it rains, mm -hmm. it splashes rains up. And, yeah, it hit the leaves. That's, That's sure why enough. you get rid of leaves. But you can hit it and then bounce back up. And start it all over again. Right. So often, what I do is I'll look and I will. I, some of this might have to be taken out, but okay. Here's here's a leaf, right? Right here. Oh, an outward uh, facing yes. bud. And I just removed a leaf, but I can see that another leaf will come out there. Okay. So I, and you cut it far enough above, above it, it that you're not cutting into the line. Oh, okay. Because so because that will end up killing. So that line is a guiding point. You want to be above the line. Yes. You don't want you, to be right on. And you line. don't want it real high above because it'll all die back. Right. But you, you want it up above far enough mm -hmm. that you don't um, cut into the growth that's going across. Right, because it will, okay. it will kill it. I've done it plenty of times. <laughs> and and if you do do that, it's not a huge deal. But you want to try to stay away from doing that. So on this one, I'll come down to here. Yeah, because you've got an outward another one. outward facing bud out this way. Okay. And um. And so maybe on this, I'm gonna take that one off. Okay. Because that's just growing nowhere, and I think. Let's see where are we looking here. Looking for a line and a bud that's pointing out, right? Right. 
And there's one way down here, but I'm I'm losing. A I lot. think what I want to do is right here. So what is this one? What kind of, is this a tea? Yes, this is called Pink Perfection. Um, it was one of our original roses when Master Gardeners took over the care of this garden. Oh, wow. So this rose was here. And Rosemary Sawyer, our local rosarian, identified it. So when you cut that, that healed over piece off, what was the reason for that? I, I just thought it looked kind of ugly. <laughs> well, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hear you. So, so even though the, the canes look like they do, you've got this brown, it almost looks like it's dead, but it's not. No, it's not, but it is not a new young tender cane. So it won't produce anything but new canes, right? Well, no, it will produce flowers. It, oh, okay. But what you... The, one of the things of pruning is if you take off, here's a new, a newer cane. See oh, okay, the color difference. It's, yes, and it's not scaly. It's young and tender right. looking. You want to encourage new cane growth every Fr year. From the bottom. Right. Right. And one of the ways you get that is by pruning, by cutting back, because it puts more energy down into the root and into right. the... To the crown? The, yes. And then potentially it's supposed to sh help shoot out more canes. Well, it did there. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for. So then eventually you rotate all these really, and you can see there have been plenty of old canes on this. Yeah. That over the years have been cut away. Yeah. And then new ones come out. And I don't know how many years it takes for them to start looking kind of scaly, but after a while... <laughs> They start looking so, really old. These inside ones, are you going to want to take those out? Yes. Because they're all pointing in the middle? Yeah, and, and right for our purposes right now, we want to open it up right. and let the sun and the air come in. Right. And so we're just kind of cleaning stuff up. Now, I'm, what I try to do is take canes down, but they don't have to be exactly the same height but i tried to get them close close um but sometimes i don't get them close so with these two yeah see so, this right here uh -huh. that thing right there's got a hole what, well it's called a is it a boar a boar and it's actually a bee oh is it an you think it's a little mason bee yeah and they go down in and they keep bur burrowing so what I want to do, because this cane is kind of... And the see? hole's pretty deep. Yeah, so it's... Will it so kill it then? It could. And so what, usually in this case, I keep going down till I get a fresh cut. Till you get no hole. So let's see. Right. Exactly. That's what I mean by fresh cut. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> it's still oh, there. Oh, wow. So we'll... Okay, I can okay. see... There's it's a like, line right here, okay. and it might not be exactly where, which direction I want it to go in. But, but we, we want to see if we can beat the hole. See, Yay! There we go. There's a clean <laughs> As cut. As you can see, there's a clean cut. Right. And now that'll eventually, ideally, shoot up. Yes, it should come out this way. Well, you've got and a bud you know over what? there if that we, I'm not looking at. Yeah. We could actually take this whole cane out. out because of the way it looks growing off that way now see this one oh that's the that's the one you just took out that. oops so now this is a lot heavier cane right but here is a really good spot to cut mm -hmm. for outward growth so i'm going to go right above it you're going to almost need the loppers for that yeah huh? this these are new so oh, they're sharp yeah they they work pretty good okay so we're getting there should i keep going sure just finish this yeah. hybrid tea up um so you're gonna even though you have well all this up up here. Oh yeah, all that will have to come off. All this <laughs> see, yeah, when you're pruning. So that's what I gotta do at home with mine then. Yes. Because no matter if I had one that kind of went after my son didn't water it while I was gone for two weeks. Do you think it's a chance that it'll come back if I cut take all this stuff back down? It's worth trying. Yeah. I mean, you know. Okay, so this is growing right in the center. It's growing this way. Okay. And that gives this cane that we maybe should even cut off 
So it's it in the difference in the cuts, whereas with the fruit tree, you try to do an angle, right? Cut, but here, well, if you, you do, do that, you yeah, but here, if you do that too severe, you're going to cut into that line that you're talking about, right? So that's why you go up a little bit higher, okay? But it, it's still the a slight theory angle is that it causes the rain to run to off, slide off, but I don't know, and I've heard other people demonstrate rose pruning and they say that they don't believe that that actually does anything <laughs> but you know i mean hey if it if you want to and it works sounds in work. theory it sounds it does it makes sounds sense. like it would work so i'm looking here on you're looking for a little outward and bud. right here's an outward bud so that i'm going to get rid of all you're this good at stuff. spotting them well and and the older the cane gets the mm -hmm. harder it is to see it but because part You've been of these, doing it for a long time. Yeah, and because the tree or the rose is older, mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm gonna leave this so I can get growth off of this young tender one that's shooting out of it. Right. Okay. You know, we lost a substantial amount right here. Yeah, on this side. Yeah. So just to keep it, you know, going, I think it would be a good idea. Now I'm thinking for this cane. Yeah. Having an outward facing bud this way would work. So I'm in your way. I was seeing if I could even see one. <laughs> I'm standing on your tools. Yeah, see which. Okay. Can you so, see right I, here? How do you see that? Okay, um, let's see if I can pick it up. Point at it again. Wait, okay. don't you close. Right too close. there. Where that line is? Uh huh. Okay. So I'm going to go above. I'll take your word for it. Above, okay. <laughs> above the line. So okay. I'm not going to cut into that. Ah. And there it goes. <laughs> and See, that, I, I, that's the part I got to get over. And that, yeah, I know. And it is. It, when I first start every year, yeah. I'm a little ah, hesitant. And then I get into the roll of it and I just start lopping. But that's going to create right. growth, hopefully. This so direction. Then are you going to do something with this last cane then, probably, oh, yes. right? Yes. So once again, you're going to look for... Yeah, but outward. That, since that one's leaning out, are you still going to look for an outward facing? Yeah. Bud? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but we'll see how far we need to take it down. Which means you might have to go farther. If Hypothetically, if you were to go down farther, do you think that would bring it back up more oh, oh, straight? Well, we it don't know. Would. Hopefully it would. Um, <laughs> the thing about the the roses is you're always going to be, you know, cutting to where you want it to grow outward right. and upward. And sometimes this might end up being a cane. That just wants have to keep to... going out. But see, this is an old rose that died. Uh -huh. I'm going to get rid of. The, All that growth the, is just from the... That's just from the uh, rootstock. So we don't know what that's going to be. This was a beautiful old rose, purple lavender, and oh. it was super fragrant. I see a line there, but here's a line, but I think it goes this way. Okay. Ow. Is that <laughs> one right there? Yeah, no, that looks like it would go this way. <laughs> but we could do that one. <laughs> you know? Because... That won't hurt. No. There. And so, then you clean up all the debris around. Yeah. And we always, in this garden, we always leave our California poppies because we love them. Yes. And um, clean them up and then I will come back later and give them some nice fertilizer and they'll do well. This and will and do tell, really the, tell the folks what you like to use the fertilizer roses oh. with. Gosh, over the years, I've used so many different things, but... Well, I remember you telling me about Epsom salt and, and alfalfa, alfalfa pellets. pellets. Yes, uh, or alfalfa meal. And okay. that's always good. And you can do that along with a rose fertilizer. Um, so do you just work it in the top, or do you just put it around the top? I put bottom, it around, kind bottom. of around the outside. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's a big old... That would be good for the saw. This you one, and would you there. take that out? Yeah, because it's just... Oh, I'll just saw it back to this... Uh, right. To the crown, I need to back yeah. up. Yeah, and then you kid. just get it out. And then I'd fertilize around the outside. So, yes, uh, Epsom salts are great. Those are um, That would be for your calcium, the, right? Yeah, and they encourage... Or magnesium. 
and okay. they encourage the green okay. and growth, definitely. And, and the alfalfa is definitely nitrogen. Yes, that's the growth. Right. So, and then, you know, some nice rounded, what is the one that I got? I get it at Sonora Lumber. Um, is it made from Garden and Bloom or do you remember? Garden and Bloom, I don't it's think it's G and B. Yeah, I, I gosh, I should know. Uh, no, it's right, but it's a well, it's a usually a fertilizer speci specified for roses. Yes, and I love to use the all purpose for roses and flowers, right? And I usually try to buy an organic, mm -hmm. and so. As soon as they start, you know, as soon as you start seeing the leaves coming out, which right. is now, I mean, we just pruned them all off, but um, then I need to get everything fertilized. And as okay. it rains or whatever, it will, pretty soon this will be low. So you don't want to really fertilize till you're done pruning because you're right. encouraging growth. You're going to cut yes. off anyway. Right. So <laughs> it's better if you do wait. So do you know if, if the rootstock they use on roses is usually from like the same kind of rose, do they have a like an old wild rose or something that they um or well we're not sure. I think I what I do know about the rootstock is they usually use a rootstock that is more disease resistant and healthy, just kind of like vigorous. Right. And that is a great thing to graft the rows of your choice, the color you want right. onto that. So, but I don't know if, you know. Well, I, I know with like, um, let's say apple trees, there's like maybe two or three varieties of rootstock that they stick with. That's cool. At least that's what I learned. Right. And then with the grapes, um, I was told by Jim that all of the European grapes that they brought over in the 1800s all died from disease so they had to start using rootstock from the wild grapes that oh. were grown in the united states okay. so it's probably the same kind of idea they did that because of the disease resistance and the yes so but we're not sure that's a good question we'll have to ask that is a good question so over here we have some evidence of black spot oh, and yes. anybody that's had roses and i'm standing in the shade or shadow but you can see the black spot on the roses that Yes. Every I get it no matter what. I got it even during the summer, I found. Oh, yeah, sure. On a few of my roses, they're just more prone to it. And, and I noticed on mine, when you just touch these leaves sometimes on mine, they just fall right yeah, off. Yeah, and um, one, one year I had a Joseph's coat, beautiful climber, mm -hmm. and I saw that it had black spot on it, but I was worried about, what do they call it, the transplant? Operation that yeah. when the sun's hitting and turning it right because you have all the opening and closing stomata on the bottom of right. the leaves yes so I was now concerned. we're getting too technical right okay but right. I was concerned to cut it all off so Did you want I it? left it there no and it killed the, I mean it, the the rose died I'm not sure if it was a black spot or well somehow I bet you now on that topic that once the leaf is like that you're not gonna I bet those stomata are not working anymore oh yeah that guy's He's no good. But then when you prune, right, you get all rid of all this stuff. So, so after you prune this, since it has black spot, are you going to clean your clippers? Oh, and yes. In fact, you should probably do that I should anyway. I do that now. Be, Just from rose to rose, right? Right. Now, that's, um, that's a good practice to do because then you're, you're getting rid of anything. So you're not transferring disease from one rose to the other. Right. And, um, you know, sometimes at home I'm not that uh But precise. it's your, but your, yeah. But I, I try to be. And sometimes I do better than other times. So. Depends on if you're in a hurry, I suppose. Right. So we just clean off. But for your alcohol. own, if you have the time to take and you're doing it, it's a best practice that you don't have to come back later and make right. up for it for taking more black spot off or something yeah yeah and you know you want to try to uh get it make it so that there's the least amount as right that you can have okay so do we have a different kind of rose this is iceberg and this is a floribunda okay so what's how do we cut these back differently let me try okay. this angle right here. sorry about the moving fast oh, no. in the video oh, okay <laughs> here uh, let me grab real quickly. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I didn't Go ahead. Grab the, 
the loppers, but right off the bat, I see a dead. A big a dead, dead cane. cane. Oh, I can see it. Can we can see it back there by the color difference? I'm right. sure. Let it me. Looks dead as a doornail. Yep. And you could take. You could take a saw. Like oh, because that, that whole that whole cane all yes. the way down to the bottom was dead. Okay. Yeah, it's dead, and that's okay. That won't hurt a thing. That does that mean it just basically lived its life and yeah and um like right in the back there see that cane is all dark brown and mm -hmm. and there's a little baby cane coming off of it but it's not like a real healthy young cane it's real thin well i see what you're saying like down here what about that is that a sucker down there at the bottom um or do you think that it's just coming out of the crown you see i have to move so you can see what i'm it, talking this, that little baby green one going off there. yeah I think it's just a small cane coming. Oh, because but it's it, not uh, vigorous. It's not healthy. So, you are you going to cut that out then? I think so. They, I mean, it's not they very say vigorous. You should prune if it's um, a pencil size or smaller than a pencil size. Mm -hmm. You should just lop it off because yeah. that will. It, the thing about Be too weak. Yeah, and the thing about lopping it is it will encourage new growth. Yeah, which is what we're always trying to do is get new More. canes to come out. And then eventually you get rid of all the old stuff and every year you just keep it going like okay. that. Okay, so I'm looking, we got that one dead cane. It might be good to take that cane out. Since we have see this is a real old you cane. You mean this too. this whole this whole cane right here? Yeah, sometimes it's good to just remove them. And, and then let this one. would you would you leave this one then? Well that would make it it's nice. It's growing in, but yeah, and we can get rid of the more inward. And that might be a good thing to do because that will encourage more new growth. And it'll Where make... these, when they get really old, mm -hmm. you know, it's sad to cut it off, but it encourages younger growth. So Which eventually will get that thick, mm -hmm. I, yeah. ideally. So, so we could, maybe I'll start right here. Okay. Now you do floribundas. That is, there's three kinds of pruning. Mm -hmm. There's open uh, center. Well, no, it's called severe would be hacking it down. Some people love to hack it down even farther to a than few that. inches off the ground. I'm more of a moderate pruner unless <laughs> there's disease or those bore holes that just keep right. on going down. Um, I'm more of a moderate pruner. And then there's light pruning. And some people are more comfortable with light pruning. They just clip a little here and a little mm -hmm. like that. Um, and but that's I, a, I wonder if the... If their bushes last as long. I think that they would. They, what they say is that if you prune lightly, severe pruning can cause more blooms. I shouldn't know this. It's okay. I know that severe pruning is for more blooms. Yeah, but eventually more blooms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could look on my notes. No, it's okay. okay. We can always figure out those questions when. Okay people are asking them later we'll right. be able to maybe answer that question so what i was thinking all right you're gonna lose that hole this whole cane okay because you got if we get rid of this one and that one it's all young tender well that and then we wouldn't run into it as much in the pathway exactly. there exactly and that's running into a rose in the pathway is not i really see great. and then that looks really nice now now see this is so it's that set Smaller than a pencil. <laughs> I know it really is. But are you gonna leave it for a while and see? I'll leave it till toward more of the end of the pruning of this, and then we'll look at the shape and yeah, make a decision that way. Cause that's sometimes. So you're gonna take that big cane out? Yeah. And you just have to do it's this because it's older. Yeah. Like you said. And see, we've already all got... those ones in the middle look pretty young. Yeah. Yeah, we've already got some really good canes. And there's plenty, and this can encourage new growth. We'll just have to see what happens. And then, so, let's, because what I was thinking by cutting that one out, mm -hmm. this one here. Might be encouraged to go outward. Yes, if oh, I So take, you're going to cut it down to that I one. If I it here, mm -hmm. it would get rid of this growth that's hitting everything. Right. And that would encourage that. Yes. One right there to get to yeah. be a, a main branch. Ah, yes. <laughs>
So what you can do, just take off the old leaves. Right. Till you get to an outward facing bud. Right, like right, well, right there's perfect. Okay, I see that one. And clip right there. And then take off that last leaf. Okay. And actually, if you look right here, there's a, it's already coming out. And so oh, yeah, I that's see. gonna grow right see. into the center. So often what I do this early in the spring, I just take that off. You pulled the, the little growth yeah. off oh, to get, and, encourage this outside one. Yeah, and it will grow inward during the summer. Ouch, during the, oh, oh my, my gosh. <laughs> you keep getting yourself. During the growing Nature season. Nature of roses. Yes, so. So once again, you're still trying to shoot for an open, more open right. center. Yeah, so, and see how this is coming right up in the center? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I leave that kind of stuff if there aren't enough canes. Like I try to keep, say you got a rose that has four canes. Right. And they try to have five or six, they want you to leave five or six. Okay. But we've only got four. Right. So I would leave something like that. Oh, but you're and not just, going to today, huh? Well, I'm kind of looking at it going, that's kind it's of It's pointing going. this way. Yeah, but I it's, don't know. See, it's criss... Oh, and this one's crisscrossing and going into the center as well. So, and then this is what I do This a is a dilemma. Yes. So then often I'll just take it down to an outward face and bud and call it good. What about that right there? Is that too high up? No, no. So you, we could cut it, like cut this. Like, mm -hmm. Probably be better just to do this. Right. Uh, that's going to have, there's one, two, three. Right. And I bet most people would say, no, you should take that out because it's not growing outward. I see, because it's the whole thing is pointing but. Yes. What are you gonna? What do you think? You gonna wait? Well, we can see? leave it. I mean, the good thing is, is you can come back and take it, it out later. Right. If you don't like it, then you can always take it out later. That's the, one of the beauties of the pruning right. process. So let's see. We're we'll leave that one there for right now. Okay. And I was thinking maybe we. Yeah. See that guy is just kind of weak. He's all right. He's not. You thinking about taking it down even farther? <laughs> well, yeah, see, I'm, I'm trying to keep it more level, but it's, I, in this situation, it might not be all that important. I don't know. I just think you probably should take it out. Yeah, that might help that one that you decided to leave in the middle for now, right? Yeah. Let's there's count a... how many we got. Okay. This is an oldie. Well, you got... One. Right. You count that as one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two. two. Are you not gonna count? Are you counting that, or is that well, too skinny? That's that's too skinny. I okay, think. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Unless you're counting the skinny ones. So. Probably if we. This one does. This one look older to you than this one? Oh yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Because these little scaly older. things. Yep, it's got a lot of yuck on it and that's another reason if we're gonna take one out it which should be the one that's older right if that's the if one. it's in the right direction right but this one's almost pointing better outward than yeah. this one so <laughs> that means that <laughs> i know so, so you have to weigh do i want to keep the newer cane that's not pointing quite where i want it or right keep the older cane that's a hard and one the good thing is there it's there's no wrong or really right wrong i mean the roses are are super tough and they will grow they just want to be cared for they want fertilizer and water and they want to be cared for so pruning is part of that all right let's just take it out okay okay we're gonna go for the older one that we were pointing out yeah okay and, and that's that guy out. There okay and you can see how it's starting to kind of open up right more and more as we're doing this um, and actually, it wouldn't be bad to take... Take that other one out, too. Maybe. See how this is a new, young, tender cane? Uh-huh. Whoopsie. Sorry. Take that. Okay. Let's see. Maybe we should take... Uh, I'll just... 
right here, there's a shoot outward shoot. Okay, I see it right there on the other side. I so I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but we've yeah, got right it there. right there is my finger and in the picture. Will, <laughs> right, and there I'm going to take this off because it's too close to our pathway. Right, and it'll just get damaged anyway. Right, and then... There's your outward bud again. Now, often with uh, Floribundas, I, I tend to leave more. Right. You know, more shoots going here and there. Right, because but, of the nature of its growth, right? Right, and... Um, but... <coughs> so are you going to leave all this new growth here like this? You're not going to take all those leaves off, are you? Um, I'm just... I'm just curious. The I, I can know. see those ones. There. Okay, that's that's. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because it's so, not going to stay. This is potentially a, another branch, right? Yes, but it is growing into the center. Right, so you're going to cut that whole... Okay. Yeah, and then on... Then you look at these, like, would you leave that one on that's pointing on the inside, or would you take what it What I on? would do, if Just I'm going to down to it there at all, I would do that. Okay. Take it, and it's kind of... Going that way, yeah. We And see, these are the weirdest little the, yeah. growth. They're not really a cane. No? And, uh, that curvy thing like that? Yeah, it just comes out hard. I call them... Um, growth that goes nowhere <laughs> they go like a few inches so i often just i wonder if that's almost like a sucker in a way i don't know but i i really am it goes I, nowhere <laughs> when i look in my rose book i can't find any reference to this kind of growth and i'm seeing it a lot so um it's, so do you think that this was the result of one of those this hook shape yes it could be where well, well, well maybe not right yeah so what we could do here, well, we could even leave that. And see let's, what it does. Look. Yeah. Take that one. And you got to take that inside one, right? No? Yeah, that one. That's still far enough away, don't, I don't know. I'd like to get rid of one of them, one where. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that. There you go. <laughs> so it's not as severe right. as. Uh, as what we did over here with yeah. the flora bund and here or, or the t rose I mean. right with the t rose and then that's kind of growing in so and here's one of those that go to nowhere so i always okay. do that but it doesn't mean i won't get more because we always do okay let's see what we got here so you want to look for that outward facing bud yeah is that one dead down there by is that a bud or is that just yeah, that one, that's one of those nubs. Okay. And there's... Not really seeing a bud, huh? Uh-uh. We're getting a long video going here. I suppose <laughs> we better wrap it up soon. Okay. But, um, we didn't get a chance to talk about climbing roses today, but we will have... Debbie will be around for, to answer some more questions for you here in the future. And yeah. I know that Debbie and... Christina have to go pretty soon so <laughs> I want to yes. thank you Debbie thank you and I'm making you stare in the sun and I apologize that's okay and I hope it was helpful and, and thank I learned a lot today and thank Good. you Debbie